Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. Today we are at the Portland Japanese Garden. My eldest kid, Ruth, has a membership Hello. and she gets to bring me with her. Um, our plan this year is probably to come once a week and enjoy the garden as it changes. We thought we would show you around a little bit this morning. So you might ask, what does the Portland Japanese Garden have to do with permaculture since this is a permaculture YouTube channel? There are a ton of native species incorporated into the Japanese garden, and also there are many design elements that you may find useful and you may find not only aesthetically pleasing, but also practical for your permaculture garden. So I feel like the more we can diversify and the more we can study different design techniques, different styles of gardening, the more we can take little bits of those and incorporate them into our design to have a more effective, more resilient, and more enjoyable garden at home. So Ruth, is there anything that you want to say about the Portland Japanese garden? Uh, I love to come here and draw. I got a membership so I can come here and just sit in one place and draw the whole time. I love drawing all the plants. Yeah, so I think one of the perks of having a membership is you can get in two hours before the general public. And even if you come during general public hours, right now you need to reserve a ticket online, but you can just sit. There are many little vistas and pavilions and locations where you can sit and draw or meditate or bring your knitting and just enjoy the landscaping here. So it's a really peaceful, quiet place. And we plan on coming back frequently this year to yeah, get the best benefit definitely. out of our membership. And also just because we really enjoy it here. Yeah. So we're gonna show you around a little bit and then we'll be back at the end. The Portland Japanese Garden is located in Washington Park, nestled uphill from the Rose Garden. It does take a little bit of an uphill hike to get there. However, there is a tram that can take you if you don't want to make the climb. If you're able, I do recommend the walk because it is beautifully landscaped with a number of water features and extensive native plantings. The shady walk up to the garden is landscaped with native plants, like this Vancouveria. If you're looking for design inspiration and plant ideas for a shade or woodland garden, this walk is a great idea. Here you can see the fringe cup in bloom. I have this all over my garden, one of my favorite natives for a shady spot. False Solomon seal is also a good choice for a native plant in a shady location. The garden has seen some additions over the years, such as this courtyard and some of the updated buildings when you first enter. However, the original garden was designed in 1962 by Professor Takuma Tono. It is considered the finest example of Japanese garden design in North America. The flat garden is one of Ruth's favorite parts of the garden. It has elements in it meant to represent each of the four seasons. I love that you can come back any time of the year and there will be a different focal point. It has visual interest no matter when you visit it. We came a little bit early in the season to see the wisteria, but hopefully when we come back next week, they will have begun to open up. As a permaculture designer, I love visiting gardens that use a different set of design principles than mine. It helps push my understanding and spark creativity. I find the intentionality of design fascinating. Every element is carefully selected and carefully maintained. The gardeners here are always out raking the moss, cleaning up 
the fallen leaves and petals so that everything looks pristine and very carefully presented to the visitors to the garden. It's much more high maintenance than my garden at home, but no less beautiful. Little vignettes of plantings along the sides of the path draw you in and down and help you connect more closely with the garden. I love the gardener's choice to use epimediums here, a great low growing delicate flowering plant for a shady spot. The koi pond also features natives such as these Oregon iris. Now a few years ago they had a problem with great blue herons preying on koi from the pond and had to put in a bamboo screen. This sounded like a great solution that permaculturists could consider if they are having similar issues with their ponds. It didn't harm the herons in any way and provided a safe barrier so that the fish could continue to exist in the pond without the risk of predation. This view is my absolute favorite spot in the garden. I love the forced perspective and how the designers stack the shrubs and trees in up a steep incline and blend them in to the Washington Park background behind the garden. It makes the garden seem much bigger than it is. And as a permaculturist, it makes me think about stacking layers in my own garden and utilizing my space vertically. In permaculture, we talk about how the problem is the solution and how you turn an inconvenience into a resource. In the Pacific Northwest, moss grows everywhere and most people consider it a problem or a burden. But in the Japanese garden, moss is utilized as a design element. It thrives here, it does well, and it adds a lot of beauty and rest for the eye. The utilization of stone, pebbles, ceramic tile, bamboo, and wood to add layers of texture along the edges of paths and connecting paths to garden beds was my favorite part of the garden. My eye kept being drawn down to the ground to look at the hardscaping and how it interacted with the living elements of the garden. I really want to take some of that back and figure out how to apply it in my own garden because it adds so much visual interest. And again, for me as a permaculturist, the more interest, the more I'm likely to be out in my garden interacting with nature. The rotating bonsai displays help remind me of the permaculture principle of slow, small solutions. That we need to be patient in our design and sometimes things we begin today we may not see the full effect of for many, many years. Several of these bonsai were 200 years old. All right, we're leaving the Portland Japanese garden. Just thought we would wrap up a little bit. If you want to come right now because of COVID restrictions, you have to reserve a ticket ahead of time online. I'll have the link in the description. It took us about an hour and 20 minutes to slowly walk and enjoy the whole garden twice. So that gives you an idea of how long you might want to spend here. It is a little bit of a hike up and we also found that it may or may not be ADA accessible. Some of the paths are pretty uneven and there's quite a bit of up and downhill. So just be aware if you're coming and you have mobility issues. Wait till these folks pass. Okay, so just be aware if you have some mobility issues, uh, you might want to call and ask about how easy it will be to get around. Um, there is a tram that takes folks only four at a time because of COVID restrictions if you can't walk the steep hill up to the garden. Now the garden changes every week and it's really worth checking out ahead of time what you might be experiencing that week. We just missed all of the cherries and we're at a point where the azaleas and roadies aren't really in full bloom yet, but it was still gorgeous and we enjoyed everything. We'll be back in a week or so, so we can get the rhododendrons and azaleas at peak bloom. Right now, 
what we saw was a lot of camellias, right, Ruth? Yeah. And the Japanese maples are all leafed out. Yeah. So thanks for coming along with us on our tour of the Portland Japanese Garden today. Maybe there are some elements you can use in your own garden at home, be it a cottage garden or permaculture garden or a Japanese style garden that you have. I know for me, there were several things I put in my little notebook of uh, design elements I would like to include in the future. So we'll be back from our garden later this week, but um, hope you got something out of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Also check out my Patreon in the link. Uh, it's a great way to support our family continuing to make videos for y'all. So thanks.